Hi everybody, in this video we are going to talk about when to use joins and much more importantly when not to use joins. A lot of times when people move from pervasive to SQL, one of their first instinct is to go ahead and change everything to joins. Now, that is very problematic because even though joins are sent in a single select statement to the database, when you start having a joins between 3, 4, 5, 10 tables, the database will work very hard and actually work slower than if you were not using joins. So we have came up with kind of a rule of thumb of when to use joins and when not to use joins and use other, other alternatives such as in-memory or caching and we'd like to share it with you. So let's go ahead and start by adding a new business process. Let's imagine it's a report. Okay, and demo joins. Okay, and we'll talk about several things here. First of all, we're going to use the orders table and we're going to use the customers table and we're going to use the shippers table. Okay, we we'll say form orders relations add to customers customers ID is equal to orders dot customer ID and we're going to add a relation to shippers where shippers ID is equal to orders dot ship via. Perfect. Okay. Now let's add a leave row here. And let's run it from the application on start so we can see what's going on. You can see here we're running it with the profiler so we can see the queries that were sent to the database. Okay. Now in this case, we can see that the order tables was accessed once for a select for all the rows. The customer table was accessed 90 times, okay? And the shipper table was accessed one time for every existing shippers. One, two, three, and five in this case, because we have that value, okay? Now, let's go ahead and first of all set cache to no, so we sometimes we simulate an even more dramatic case. Cached equals false. Cached equals false. Okay. Let's run it again. Great. So we can see here again we have 830 rows in our data view. Customers, or classic, the first customer 31 times, the second customer 30 times, and shippers only three variant values. Okay. Now, first of all, let's discuss the difference between inner join and outer join. And let's do it for this case on shippers. Inner joins will only return rows that exist in both tables. So in this case, we had so far 830 rows. If we change the, the relation to shippers from being a, a normal find relation to an inner join relation, in the case of shipper files that doesn't exist in our database, that row will not return to our data view, causing us to change the actual behavior of our report and getting 829 lines instead of 830. Let's see that in action. So we can say here, well, shippers is relation type join. And the result of that would mean that we only have 829 lines. Okay. Luckily, there's a solution for that, which is called auto join. And in most cases, if you don't have a very good reason to use join for changing existing code, use auto join. Okay, but if you're writing new code and you're sure that the data exists on both sides, use inner join. The database likes inner joins better. Inner joins run faster on the database. Outer joins are more expensive. But existing code that was using relation find is more similar to an outer join. Cool. So now we have one query here. Okay, where we can see that we're querying the shippers table and the orders table. Great. Now, let's go back to deciding whether or not we should even use joins. Because if we start making everything joins, let's do that as well, okay? We we'll start coming up with an incredibly complex query that will start taking more and more time, okay? You can see here this query now has orders and customers and shippers, and pretty soon we can have five, 10, 20 tables, okay? And that would never work, okay? Or at least cause the database to slow down, right? The thumb rule of using a join versus using a cache properly 
is the variance of the values of the term. Let's have a look. In this case, we can see that there are only three shippers, but there are many, many different customers. So when there is a very high variance in the result, like many different customers, I would use the joint, because then I would get the biggest benefit from it. But when there is a low variance, you know, there's only two or three values, caching will give me the bigger bang. So in this specific case, and the golden rule to apply here, customer should have relation type, Auto join, whereas shippers will do much better off with cash equal to. It will give it the actual better result. Okay, let's run this. And we can see that it was running very, very fast. And we can see that there were four queries for the shippers table and one query for the orders table that included the information in both tables, the orders and the customers. So again, if you are joining large data views that have one to one or one to few relationships, Join will help you. If you have a, 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 a sorry, one to one or few to one. If you have many to one, okay, like you know three shippers but a thousand orders, link a, or relation find is much better serving you. Now another case that is problematic to change this to join is when the relation actually fetches more than one row. For example, if you want to get the latest order for a customer, okay, let's do a latest order okay, and do here relations add latest order where latest order customer ID is equal to orders dot customer ID okay and hit it and say r dot a order by add latest order date descending well, this kind of query is not a good candidate for changing into a join because it returns more, more than one row for every option. Okay, it returns all of the uh, orders that exist for that customer and then fetches the first one. We can see here the select settings that is being generated where actually the gateway in .NET actually adds the top one entry over here. Should just jump to the left. You can see here that we're adding the top one here, which saves a lot of performance, but still, you cannot join into such a scenario. When you have this scenario and you need to join to it, there's a complex concept of ranking. Uh, give us a call, we'll be happy to help you. But the sum of the sum, the, 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 what we call it, the thumb rule, is when you have a, a relation, okay, that fetches rows with high variance, like you know, many, many different customers, or a one-to-one -one relationship, or a, or a few to one relationship, that's the best way, the best place to use our join. In most other cases, when you're fetching only five different records in, in the relation table or stuff like that, use relation find or maybe use the in-memory to improve its performance. And I hope this was useful and let us know what you think.